Hi everyone, it's Olivia and welcome to this channel where we talk about Rizzo, zines, art fairs and conventions and all sorts of cool stuff. Now in this video, we are going to be making another 3 color Rizzo graph scene without the use of Photoshop or any graphic software. So this video is actually a continuation of the one sheet Rizzo graph scene video with a spring theme where we used watercolor Conte pencil and a typewriter. So in this video, we are actually going to be working with photography, in particular Instax photos. And we're also going to be drawing using some fine liners as well as using other cool materials to create this photography collage zine. So I went to the thrift store the other week and I found this really cute mini inkjet photo printer that prints 4x6 photos and the box actually came with a whole pack of glossy photo paper so we're actually going to be using this for our little photography collage zine so if you'd like to find out how please keep watching all right so let's get started so this summer zine is about a day i spent with my boyfriend at the annual canadian national exhibition or cne for short He's lived in Toronto for most of his life, but he's never been, and I've never been either. So this scene just documents that day. So I'm just using a blue pencil to make a grid so that I can place the photos on the paper correctly. I'm using tracing paper, and fun fact, I am in Canada, but my tracing paper is actually from National Bookstore in the Philippines, not sponsored. The tracing paper will allow me to overlay drawings over the photographs and separate out my ink colors. Okay, so this zine is going to be the same dimensions as the spring zine, which is quite small. It is 2.75 by 4.25 inches. So it's the dimensions you get when you divide a letter size sheet of paper into 8. And if you'd like more information, please watch my no photoshop rizograph zine video where I take you through the process of making the spring zine. The first thing I'm doing is laying down the blue photos for the blue layer. So all of these photos will be printed in medium blue ink. I'm using double-sided tape to stick the photos to the tracing paper. The double-sided tape is actually quite forgiving on the photos. They're easy to take off of the glossy photo paper material of the Instax, so I can fix any positioning errors if I need to. I am not making the photos centered. In fact, I'm turning them to different angles, and you will see why shortly. So, I do the same for the orange layer, except for I put the photos in the other boxes that are not taken up by the blue layer photos. The tracing paper I'm using is actually letter sized or 8.5 by 11, so I actually have to tape them together to make an 11 by 17 inch spread. Once I'm done positioning the photos, I put the two layers, blue and orange, on top of each other. And again, I lay another sheet of tracing paper on top of both for the red ink layer. So this is the reason I've put the photos at angles. I actually want to make it look like they're hanging on a string, like how Instax photos can be hung up using cute little clothespin clips. But instead of clips, I'm using washi tape to position the string on the page. I'm using a darker colored string and washi tape so that they will show up clearly when they are scanned. Okay, next I wanted to make alternating color outlines and drop shadows. Because my Instax film is white, if I didn't draw the outlines and the drop shadows, the edges of the photos won't show up. So I just wanted to define the edges a little bit more. Then I get working on the orange layer. So on the orange layer tracing paper that is over the blue layer, I use gray markers to color in some areas that I thought might be interesting to print on the blue, such as some clouds or little areas of focal points. I try not to use too dark of a gray because I don't want to overwhelm the blue. I want the orange to be a bit more subtle and to blend nicely with the blue, especially in the sky areas where the blue is going to be quite light. Next, 
Next, I switch the two color layer tracing papers and I get to work on the blue layer. Because medium blue has quite a darker tone than melon orange, it's better for line work. So I do more drawing type line work and some lettering on this layer. Something I do for the drawings is add more of an illustrative twist to the photos. So I'm actually drawing over and past the photo area and adding my own embellishments to some of them. One thing I'd like to note is that the Instax is really hard to control and it's really hard to predict how the photos are going to come out. So these are not National Geographic level photos and I'm not myself a trained photographer and most of us aren't so for these photos we're just going to try our best to work with what we have. I actually messed up a bit on that dragon's claws because I made it too big but not to worry it's easy to fix by just putting another sheet of paper over it and trying again. Last part is the text that is going on the red layer. I cut up some notepad paper and stick them on the tracing paper because otherwise I'll write crooked. And also it's really easy to replace the paper if I mess up. The light blue lines on the notebook paper do not actually show up when photocopied so they become invisible. So it's still going to look like I write pretty straight. Yep, it is all a lie. Alright, so that's all the layers, so let's get ready to print. Alright, so now we're ready to print and the first thing we're actually going to do is to print the text. And this is actually going to go on a different sheet of paper than the zine itself. It's going to make a lot more sense when I put the zine together, so let's pop this into the scanning platen and uh, get going on the printing. So let's take a look. Oh my gosh, it looks amazing. I really love the red on the orange and I don't know if it shows very well on the camera, but this is actually quite a fluorescent orange. So if you look at the paper, that's just white with the red versus the bright orange with the red, it really makes a difference and I really love it. And I'm so excited. So let's take a look at the original in there and compare that to these two. All right, so there's the original. So let me just turn this over and let me just put this on here so that we can see it clearer. So that's what that looks like. So it's going to translate the grayscale values of this onto the red ink. So the next step is to print the washi tape and the string by themselves on the sheet of paper that we are going to be using for the photo section of the zine. But rather than take these little notes off one at a time and then rescanning this and burning another master, we're going to actually do a trick. Alright, so this is the master where the holes for the text, the washi tape, and the string are burned on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use tape to tape up the areas of the text so that I can just isolate the string and the washi tape. And then that way I don't have to burn or waste another master.
All right, so now let's work on the blue layer. So I've put in the blue ink cylinder into the Rizzo. And so now I'm gonna put this on the scanning platen and scan it. All right, so for the blue layer, I don't want it to be too inky and dark. I'm not really sure what to do. So I'll just do group because there's a lot of pictures in there. And I'll do okay. And so I want to lighten it up a little bit because I just don't want it to be too much. So let's try it at one to the left in terms of lightness and darkness. And uh, let's uh, make a master. Alright, so let's take a look at how the blue did. The blue, I think, actually did pretty well. This is a medium blue and not the Rizzo blue. And I like that it's kind of like a ballpoint pen type of blue. And I like the contrast of it and I think the details are also pretty good. One thing I noticed is that there is a bit of smudging on here which is not very, very evident on here. But for some reason, the Rizzo is picking up smudging right there. It doesn't really bother me because there's going to be a, an orange layer under it anyway. And so I think that's going to look pretty interesting with the orange under it. I also like that it picked up the drop shadows pretty well. So I think that the drop shadows showed up pretty clearly on the blue and the photo group mode. So yeah, I'm going to keep this and now we'll do the orange layer. Okay, so I really like it. I think it looks really good. I think that the shading showed up pretty well. That's what this shading looks like. So let me actually move it a little bit closer. So that is what that shading looks like in that gray tone. And then the words are more solid because I did that with the pen instead of the marker. And I did it on full black ink. And yeah, I think it's going to look really interesting once it combines with the blue photos. Alright, so this is what it looks like in the end. I really like it so much. It has this collaged effect and I think that the combination of the colors along with the paper is pretty cool. The only thing is that this part is really, really off and that is a lesson learned. Try not to make things that need to be too registered when you are doing everything manually. But other than that, I think that this is pretty decent looking and I'm so excited to put it together.
so that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyable. And if you did, please give this video a like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the comment section below. And also, if you'd like to support this channel and purchase a uh, summer zine or a spring zine, I will leave a link in the description below as to where you can do that. Just a note, I do do a very limited run for my tutorial videos. I put everything together myself, so the quantities are quite limited. And so if you see a zine, it's better to snag it sooner rather than later. Because when it does sell out, I will most likely not be reprinting the zine. Because I do want to move on to creating other zines as well. So yeah, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.